The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Now, Basil Chapman. Hi everyone, Tuesday, June the 7th, Dow is down 160, coming back from the low of the day, which was down to 32,641 areas, up 100 points from that. So it's still down 164 at 32,749. It's within this rectangle area. It's really more like an oval area, unless it takes out 32,509, closes under it, I should say. No, no, no. And this pattern, it just has to break under it not even close, and that negates the pattern that we're looking at as a potential oval pattern, using up time sideways, uh, doesn't look like a rectangle, does look like an oval, and uh, therefore it needs by the end of the day to be down only about 60 points or better than that, and that'll be positive. The target issue is, uh, it's a big issue, obviously. I mean, target is not, not not like a little small baby company here. This is Target Call Retail Sales. They gapped down. They had that huge gap down on disappointing uh, statements after the earnings. And that was on the 18th. And it goes from uh, the two, around about the 260s back earlier. Um, that was at the end of last year. Plummets down to a low of, that was a low of on the 24th of May goes down to 145.51 and today's low is 147.50 um, in the H pattern right here let me just draw that in to show you what an H pattern looks like it means you've come down sharply you created a left side slump to the downside and then you try to have a little bit of a bounce. You make an H and you retest the left side low. If it's a su successful retest and the MACD starts to cross positive, at this point it's still a little negative, and the stochastic at 20% can start to move higher, uh, you also need the unbalanced volume to be moving up. You could actually start a move that says if at any point in the next seven sessions, seven so that'll take you to next. Yeah, in the next seven sessions, if there is a close above the high that was made on the 31st of May, which is 166.79, that's a big, big uh, question. But that would be the. That's what you need to see. You need to see the gap being filled uh, from that previous slump in May, um, and it needs to be soon. If it starts to close under 140 at any point in June. That doesn't tell you about the uh, uh, about target. Uh, no, it certainly t tells you about target. But what it is really telling you about is that the RTH, the Van Eck retail ETF, where twenty percent is Amazon, uh, coming off a low that was made at one hundred and forty-five, uh, one forty, one forty-four point eighty-five. Uh, now we're looking at a bounce that just yesterday was up at the one sixty. Uh, threes, almost 164. Today, gap down, down 2.20. So this is so far well off the low, and that's so far that's a good sign. Uh, we don't want to, you don't want to get in the way of anything here. You don't want to be trying to tell the market where to go. You just want to say, hey, not bad action thus far. Let's see what we're looking at if we go to the XR, uh, RTH, and the XRT. If you go to the XRT. <clears throat> that um, is, is slightly different. It has equal weighting, so Amazon doesn't distort. This is much a much truer reflection. Went to a trough F, had a big spike <clears throat> from the low. <coughs> excuse me, uh, the low of uh, 50, 50, oh, 58 round number low in an ETF. A round number low that is significant on the 24th of May. Uh, let's just put that in there. 58 around number low on five. What did I say? It was five. Let's just call it 23 for now. I'll check it out. There you go. So 24. So on the 24th of May, it goes to. 
Yeah, 58 round number low, closed at 59.17, and it spiked to uh, 67.25. Oh, no, it went a little high. It went to 67.59. Hmm. So that's almost nine points. It is nine points. All right, let's see how this this come how we can come out of this because it's uh, the the weekly chart is terrible, the monthly chart is terrible, but in the XRT S and B retail ETF equal weighted, so Amazon doesn't distort. We're looking at a gap that hasn't been filled yet, uh, and that gap really let's talk about sixty seven oh five. Let's call it sixty seven. Starts to trade under sixty seven, then the high of the twenty fifth, which is sixty six point eighty six. Uh, that could be tested. All right, so where are we? Let's just do this one at a time. What we're looking at is the Dow is the leading I index because it has the right mix of this particular environment. Um, and let me just do this one more time, INDU. The Dow is holding better than the others, but that doesn't make it great. The weekly chart is still only in a leg A to the upside. Monthly chart is way better than you'd expect under all all the circumstances, every single thing, even Target today, collapsing like it is, uh, the Dow itself has held pretty well. Okay. In the S&P, the monthly chart, and we're talking about this on the uh, sixth, uh, sorry, the seventh of the month. I mean, we've barely begun June, but I am saying that that long-legged doji, if there is a close on a weekly basis above the high of last month, which was uh, 41.77.51. If there's a push above it by one penny, go to 0.52, that would be really positive. If there is a break and you start to see 4,012, that's quite a bit lower, but 4,012 being traded any time in June, be careful. That says be careful because you could go all the way back to 38.10, the low of um, the low of this particular move on the 20, 24th, I think it was. Um, okay, that's the S&P. If you look at the QQQ, under these circumstances, it made a lower low than the low that was made on the 2nd of June, which was 303.40. And we've gone down to 302.69 today, but we are trading at 305.07. Well off the low, not good enough yet. But it has changed the pattern to say that the QQQ, which was tradable, and we've, we've had some trades, we had some nice trades, we didn't have nice trades yesterday. Uh, we had very small losses considering we had a three three times long uh, position. Uh, but we've, we, we've done okay. But most importantly, what I am looking at here is that if there is going to be a rally of substance, and I'm talking, this is a particular issue for those people who are looking at the whole longer term aspect of where we are and what we're doing. I don't think you can have a rally that's sustained unless you have the QQQ, the NDX 100. And to, to put that into perspective, ARC is, the, is, is really the bellwether in this environment of a an index that had all the wrong things, did everything wrong, that is holding above the 35.10 low around about the 15th or so of May, it's trading at 43.04. We'll talk about the clues that we're looking for to see where we're going. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a Tier 1 mining district. This is a large-scale, low-cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd Feasibility Study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16-year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks. Uh, this is very interesting. Um, I just had a question about a, uh, MQ. Um, Greg wants to know, morning, Basil. What, would you look at MQ for me? I have a small position at 10.47. MQ is trading right now at 11.61 at 4 cents. Um, and have taken some profits. I have it in leg D coming off a bottom. At what level would you add? I also have it in a confirmed ABC up to 1308. Thanks, Greg. So Marquetta, and this is a Marquetta with a Q, but no U. Very interesting. Marquetta Inc., a leading digitally native card platform for modern businesses. Is that it? Yeah, businesses uh, gives developers simplicity, trust, and scale. Obviously, that's what they put out. So it provides an open API platform that helps companies create, issue, and develop and deploy virtual and physical payment cards. Aha. Okay. Uh, let me just put here payment cards platform. Platform. Okay, that's what we wanted. So it makes a low around about six. Was that a six six dollars round number? That was a six oh five round number uh, back in early May. Six point oh five, and it rallies up to um, the uh, just about twelve. Let's see what it made uh, yesterday. Twelve oh one, twelve oh six. Twelve oh six is a high. So, first of all, you remember the payment because of Apple's payment plan. We saw that some of like Square uh, took a bit of a hit and taking a hit today down to dollar sixty eight. A, a number of these companies. What was the other one? A firm was it? A F R M. Oh yeah, a firm down ninety four cents at twenty uh, two point seventy nine. They took a hit, but M Q took a rally, a victory lap. I like that. I like it a lot. I think a lot of people listening are going to do some homework on MQ. And I'm going to put MQ Greg at 11.63. So you've already taken profits. You've done everything that I would have discussed going into a leg D. I like this. It was an IPO back in June or July of last year. Let me just check. June. It opens at... 32.50 where the round numbers no round numbers and then it promptly goes down and it goes to 29.90 in July and then it starts to rally off the uh, 23.75 low of 
August, pops up to the 37, I think, yeah, 37.90 level in October. And then from that moment on, it says only red candles every month until it makes a low of 6.05. And that was on May the uh, 12th. Oh, a lot of things at the bottom of the May the 12th. So May the 12th says 5, 12, 22. Usually I make that in green if it's in a buy mode. Yep, and it is, obviously, because it's gone to, it's already gone to a D. So it's in a leg D, probably a peak D today. We don't know. The day's here. Where would you add? I love the action on this one. As an IPO, plummets from the 37s down to 6. That's a 90, what, 1% decline? Well, I don't know what it is. But that, that's about that. I like that very much. I'm going to suggest two things. One is that you've already... I don't recommend if you just take your money off to put money right back, unless I see it as in, in a... In a a really strong position. I do see it in a really strong position. So I'm going to make a suggestion here that is a little different to what I'd normally do. I'm going to suggest of the money that you've taken off, just put a little bit back right here at 1166. This is not necessarily the exact moment. It could, it could obviously pull back. But the fact that it's acting so well in A, B, C, it's still going to make a D. I'm going to make sure that I'm talking correctly about this. So that's an A, that's a B, that's a C, that's a D. Yep, and there's another one in the 120-minute chart, peak A, peak B. Uh, that's still a B, and a C, and it should go to a D. I'm going to suggest that you, you nibble back here right at 1171. But where would you put it back if just on, under normal circumstances at a peak D, if there is going to be a pullback, and the MACD is good, the 90 is way over the 14, the on-balance volume is very weak, and that's the clue to me to say you probably will have a chance. Um, somewhere in the 1080 to, to uh, 1053 area. So give me a yell. Let's look at it together. That's where so I would nibble right here at 1169-ish, uh, anywhere in the 1160s today. Um, even if it does pull back, just to get your foot in the door because it's so strong. I mean, fund managers are going to be looking. What's the volume? I, I'm I had looking at the volume because fund managers for the small caps will look, oh, 1.7, oh, 1.8, oh, 14 million. Yeah, this is the kind of share that Marketa Inc. payment cards platform. Um, yes, I'm going to suggest that 1168, just a, put a little bit back of what you took off. And the rest you want to start looking at between 10, 1080, in the 1080s to the 1050s. That's where the 9 and the 14 period moving averages are. But the MACDs, everything here is so good. It says that if there is a pullback, it'll be under duress because the market's pulling back and is following the market. But it, the buoyancy tends to see it as daily, very strong. It does have a Chapman wave. Let me just draw this in here. This is the falling axe formation right there. And it's gone one to one to the upside. Actually, yep, real close to one to one to the upside. Now, the weekly chart, the technicals were really strong on that big pullback to 605 uh, in the MACD. The stochastic is much better than it was earlier on in 2022 when the stochastic was uh, in the single digits. And here it is at 70. I like that. And the monthly chart needs a lot of work. I'm just saying to you, this is exactly the kind of stock you want to see in an environment like this. Um, you want to see it holding very well and defying the general market trend. And that's exactly what it's doing. Okay, so that's MQ trading at 1166. And as I say, just a little bit back. Normally, I would say you've got out of it. You have to wait. But in this particular instance, because it's at D and it's holding so well, I'm saying at least get, get your foot in the door for a trading position because you've got your core position. Oh, here's the other thing. You might not get it at 1180s. You might it might just break out by tomorrow, and if it closes nicely above the 1206 high of yesterday, goes to 1218 to 1223 in the next two sessions, that's really strong action. That's the reason why I'm saying get your get your foot back in the door there, just at least to say, hey, I'm with you. 
You're doing well. Thank you. Okay, next thing we want to look at here. Let me get out of that. Just move it away. Got it out. Okay. Next question I had, um, ExxonMobil. So this is a good question. ExxonMobil making a new – oh, man. ExxonMobil making a new uh, – uh, this, I think, might be an all-time high at 101.86. Or was it 103, that high that I was looking at from way back? No, 104.76. That's kind of been the target for Exxon. Oh, can't believe it. Exxon Mobil, beautiful. Get the dividend and you've got yourself a beautiful position. And now the question is, how's it? Exxon has a CNBC special. What, Exxon itself has a special coming up June 22nd? And CNBC is really pumping up the special report. Isn't this an event that could uh, signal a major top for XOM and oil, um, oil markets? I'm not going to say major top, but certainly this kind of uh, adulation. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Tom O'Brien has just announced a live Timing the Trade webinar Friday, June 10th from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. Eastern Time. Join Tom O'Brien for five hours of live education as he teaches you his trading methodology right from his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System. In this live webinar, Tom O'Brien will be teaching you his entire trading system, including quality volume, ABC structures, Fibonacci confluence zones, cause and effect, swing points, and more. We will be limiting this class to 40 attendees, so please do not delay and reserve your seat today for this special live event with Tom O'Brien. All attendees will also receive a physical copy of his book, The Art of Timing the Trade, an $88 value, mailed to you, along with a free month of his daily newsletter, Market Insights, a $169 value. For all the details and to reserve your seat today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And we'll get back to Exxon in a moment. I just wanted to show you, this is the, I've been showing this in the den ever since I typed it up at uh, 10 o'clock before I did the news. Beta peak G in the one minute chart, right about 4106 and pulls back to where? The 200 period moving average makes the dreaded A successful H pattern right there at that peak A, retests the low on the 200 period moving average, goes peak A, peak B, C, and we just had a big spike to uh, leg D, only down 5.50 at 41.14. So this is this is the reason why I said to subscribers, um, yes, we're raising cash again. Uh, at the same time, we are getting to some positions, but very selectively. And you can see how selective this is. Um, and you, if you're looking at uh, uh, the, uh, where is this? This is a two-minute chart, leg E slash B. But the the, the ten-minute sneeze. <coughs> Excuse me. 
I wonder why that happens. It's the only time I sneeze. Well, it's the only time I remember sneeze. So this is a brand new leg B in the 10-minute chart, and that should go C and D. So in other words, this is a buy mode because, no, yep, the stochastic's at 80%. The MACD is good. The 9's way over the 14. It should go higher over the next uh, um, 20, 30 minutes. We'll see what happens. And that's the reason why we've remained along the Dow. And the question came in, uh, about Exxon. Let's get back to Exxon. We're looking at Exxon having a spectacular move of 3% today, of 3.27 at 102.10. That all, that all-time high that was back at 104. Point, what did I say it was? 77. That was 2012. Yep, 2012 July. 104.76. Uh, we're real close to that in leg F. That was a leg F and then a peak F with a doji candle top. Um, I may be watching this. So I don't want to preclude and I don't want to exclude and I don't want to include. I don't want to do anything. I love the fact that you mentioned the 22nd, 22nd of June is uh, a Wednesday. Uh, that's a Wednesday, a week from uh, tomorrow. Isn't that? No, it's a right. Week from tomorrow is eight. Yep. Yeah, no, it's two, two weeks time. Oh, two weeks is a lifetime in the oil market. All I can say is there's a real good chance that on a shorter term position, crude oil has to, um, how it deals, remember my, my target always is in the left side, right side price time match in a large, in a wide that is rectangle formation, it could start to form a lopsided cup looking like a gravy cup going just under, right on, or just above the previous high. I don't usually like to type these because it's a moving target. It's a continuous contract, so it gets smoothed out. But it was 125.83. I'll type it in. I'll type it in lightly. Uh, 125.93. I was busy talking and not listening to myself. Let's see if I can do that again. One 125.83. Not 93, 83. And I'm going to make that faded because in another few weeks' time, it will be a different price altogether. So let's just make it very light. But it is the high that was made the week of uh, March the 25th, I think it is. March, no, the 11th. March the 11th. So I'll tell you that the date is 100% correct. The pattern's 100% correct. Uh, what is not correct is the price because that's going to change. Okay, so that 125.83, just under, right on, or just above, and then be careful because you could pull back halfway back to $106. Oh, man, $106, where we were just two weeks ago. Um, yeah, you could pull back, and if that's the case, uh, that would be some kind of top. But what might happen is that we have one week of digestive phase, for peak C, and then we get to D in the weekly chart. It doesn't have to, but very often that's what we get. We get the same. It never used to be that way, but for a long time it's been that the same time frame gives you your peak D. Uh, right at, right under, or right above, and then be careful. So that's what I'm saying. So I'm not, I, I love all that other information. It's important to note, but let's face it, you're long. I know you're long. Exxon, congratulations, doing fantastically. Um, yes. So and this is F slash C in the uh, daily chart of crude oil. And uh, if if it makes a leg D tomorrow, let's say, above 120.99, and then pulls back, then we're looking at some kind of a, a digestive phase. that might only go back to last week. What was it? Four days ago, it hit 100 and. 11.28 dollars lower so all i can say is crude oil is in play i mean there's just no question about it now let's look at something else one of the reasons why i'm sorry i apologize to my subscribers today we did not go along the position that we've been going along every day i wanted to but there were certain aspects to it that i said to myself i don't know where i i feel that we will close off the low of the day i just don't know where the low is so that was the only reason, but that's okay because if, if if it's in play, we'll be able to get back in because that's that to me is the trading play that's going to give the percentages for trades and get out, trades and get out, trades and get out. And at some point, either it'll be get out completely or it'll be 
get in and hold it. But we aren't there yet. So in that respect, I just want to say, um, for us in our training position uh, that we've used the one of the ind indices for, I did not get back in today. I am, I am obviously upset because it's way off the low. It would have been a fabulous entry, but I just needed to be sure. I didn't know where to get in. I did not want to get stopped at and and then get back in. I don't mind missing it. I just don't want to take a loss at this particular point if I can. Um, let's go to. Uh, let me see. LGR. LGR. Is that something I should look at? Let me put LGR. LGR is nothing. Um, okay, questions. So we did that. Oh, so now, so the Exxon, all I'm going to say is uh, what what you're doing, uh, I, I believe you've been buying calls and you get out and take your profits, you buy. This is just a great position to have. I'm not going to interfere at all. You've been absolutely correct in Exxon Mobil. XOM is a symbol up 3.08 today at 101.81. Fabulous. The, the extension of this of this candle is saying to me we're getting real close to at least a near-term pullback, but that's all. That's all I can see. Dow's up 20, S&P is up 8. Nice. That's with Target. You see, this is what I was thinking to myself earlier today. I said, you know, this could be, as I said earlier when I was talking about it, I think in the market update, 10 o'clock market update, this could be a one-off. Because if you're looking at something like a Macy's, look, Macy's is up 47 cents at 24.64. It's up uh, two two percent, and it's gone come off beautifully off the low that was made at uh, was it was at 16 or 17. That was 16.95 on the 24th. Here it is trade 16 is trading at 24. Eight points. That's a 50 percent gain. This is a retail stock. Um, this is Macy's, folks, and Macy's is producing the propeller shaft, the very long rectangle propeller shaft that says this particular pattern can see a one-to-one -one to the downside. And if you take it from here, from the high that was made uh, to the low, let's go from there to there. Uh, let's give you numbers, and the numbers are... 37.95 the week of the 19th of, of, of March. Now look at this, new parallel, and it's even better. It didn't even get to the one-to-one, -one, not even close. It did about two-thirds retracement. Now it's coming back, and that says that Macy's is actually doing pretty well. So the retail sector is a diverse entity. Very important to come. I'll be right back. That was are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate L. LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. 
TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Uh, yes, folks, look, look at this. Microsoft is now moving uh, a little bit better. It's up uh, 266 to 27138. This is helping the daily. Uh, did make a peak at the 50 period exponential moving average. Uh, if at any point, I, I would say in June, but actually I have to say by next week, if uh, if it's above 277, ab above 280, that'll be really good action. That'll suggest to me that the low that we've made is a fairly significant low for some of the really beaten down uh, tech stocks that and we have to consider Microsoft, the cloud operation systems, um, subscriptions, et cetera, uh, as, as in that category. Uh, the other th question I had was Amazon. Could I just look at Amazon? Now that it's split, yes, it's down $1.17 at 123.62. Uh, Let's just give you a number. If it starts to trade into the gap, the gap is the high of that is that bounced on the 28th of April, where the low is 140.30 in the next day, the high is 130.76, a 10 point gap. If it's able to trade for three days in the 133 area, that's 10 points from you. That's a long way to go. But if it's able to do that, that's going to be a big positive. And I want to I want to do this because I want to see it's still tough. The QQQs are still struggling at 309.08. Uh, this is good action from earlier in the day where it was down to 302.69. Uh, in fact, it's very good, seven points higher. Uh, most importantly, I want to see where we close and I want to see this VIX index. And questions have come in about in the Chamway methodology, uh, the, the stance that we've taken, wh uh, what, what constitutes short term and what constitutes long term. I'll do that in a moment. But look, the volatility index is at 25.20, up 13 cents. If by Wednesday it touches 24.14, the 200 period exponential moving average, that's going to suggest it's going to stick there for a little bit and then try to maybe make its way lower. That's going to be important. So in the uh, being long, uh, having number of positions on the long side for the, uh, um, for the Dow via the diamonds, all I can say is on a short term, We've got this spring-loaded oval pattern. I say spring-loaded because that can fail, and it will fail if there's a close under 25,500. It fails, and it's successful as long as it goes sideways um, and attempts to at least touch 33,060. It's at 32,954. So it's like a, it's 100 points higher, um, and that will be the next step. But this is on the very short term. If it closes above 33,272 for leg B in this particular pattern, there are a whole bunch of things that, that come into play. I, I don't really want to discuss them now. I don't want to do this if this and if that. I'm just saying these are the parameters to watch. The weekly chart is really key because it's still a gray leg A after three uh, uh, highs that remain from the low of 30,635. You've got 33,213, 33,272, and then so far this week we've only got 33,235. So, uh, so far that's good, but it's just not great. I want to see a trade in June 
some way to test the down Chapman Wave inside track down channel of 33,500. Close above 33,500 in this particular phase, and that's really good. Then I can go on from a short term and say intermediate term, instead of coming back down to test at least the 31,000 level, let alone the 30,635 level of the 20th, it means intermediate term, there is still a bias that's allowing the histogram of the weekly chart to incre to decrease, still very negative, but the stochastics improved a lot. It's up at 38% now. That's better. That on balance volume is just stuck. It's horrible. I want to see it move and improve a lot. So uh, we're talking about the candle of the monthly chart. I can't get into the monthly. We've just barely begun June. So I can only do daily and weekly. So under 32,500, negative on the short term. Over 33,272 is one thing, but I really would like over 32,350 would be really positive. Uh, and that would suggest that the weekly is going to improve because 33,341 is the 14-period is the 14 exponential moving average of the weekly. A close above that would be the first close above it, not the first price point, but the first close above it since back in April, the week of the 8th, where it was up at 35,000. Uh, in the 35,000 area. Okay, uh, I hope that clarifies that. Now there are a couple of things that I also need to talk about here. Uh, within the context of the different sectors, let me just have a quick look to see if I'm not missing. Yes, I got a couple of few too. Let me just do that. I saw they go by on the ticker last night at about 6.30 or so. Yeah, fantastic action. This is Futu Holdings. This is, I guess, a Chinese. I've got to write down what it is. Let me just check it out here. Uh, check, check, check. Oh, Futu. Well, of course, if you type it in, type it in correctly. Here we go. Um, Futu Holding does what? Uh, digitized brokerage and wealth management. Oh, this is, I believe, a Chinese company. Yes, Chinese company doing very nicely here. Oh, that's a good sign. Fu to holding. And I'm going to say digi, digitized, because that's really important in this particular phase. Digitized. Of course, digitize is not good. It should be a G. So we'll make that a G. <laughs> digitize brokerage and management platform. Brokerage and man management platform. Very nice. So this is in leg A, <clears throat> PK. <clears throat> new high, peak B, new high, peak C, and a whopper of a move D and then E. And it goes from the 29, <clears throat> is it 2850 or was it 29? 2684 low of the 9th of May to yesterday's high, 26 to 48 round number high yesterday. Wow. So I'm just going to, to, to save time. Yes, very good. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh, um, we're looking at, uh, yeah, so uh, GT, that, that's a really good, that's a good, that's because it's now in leg B in the weekly chart. A, that's an A, that's an A, but it doesn't go uh, to B until sharply higher. There's your B. So that's a good start. And what I would say is normally I draw a rectangle formation. So let me do that. A rectangle formation that says a rectangle formation can last a lot longer than your patience, even though it really looks like a, a staple, right? Upside down, head and shoulders pattern. <clears throat> this is very good action. And this is the, another reason, because if you look at the FXI, and normally I would say we've got enough trouble here in America with American stocks. Why would you look at Chinese? <clears throat> look at the FXI. It's in leg A, B, C, D, E. So this is good action. <clears throat> not as good as, um, not as good as F, U, T, E. Oh, I'll be back in a moment. Dow's up 68, S, P, is up 70.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Uh, yes, so we're looking at uh, a question with Dan. Could I please look at NMTR? NMTR is, in fact, trading at 0.567. This is a, a pink slip stock. Uh, doing really nicely. It was down at 0.35 just a few weeks ago, and now it's at 0.567. Um, yes, this is not for everybody, but I, I, I can see what you're looking at in phase three for celiac interim data due in June. Strong management team, thanks. Yeah, I like this is the kind of pattern that's really good, but this is just for you know people who really understand what's going on, biotech, etc. Um, it's looking good. I would say 0.63 would be the next level on the upside, and certainly 0.51 would be support. Um, that's that. Okay, now a couple of things I need to talk about because this is actually quite an exciting session. We had Target. That's the kind of bad news, and you want the market to ignore this kind of news and say, hey, that's history. you got your own problems. We've got ours. And we are working on ours. You might not be working in yours. That's kind of the story there. So Target is still down two dollars at one fifty sevens. Um, it didn't take out the left side low, but it's it's come back very nicely from the one forty seven low. That's really important. So what are we looking at here? And one of the reasons why I've said, I believe this is kind of a stealth rally that we're looking at, just slowly one by one. You're getting a little bit better in some of the uh, different key stocks that are really important. So keep that in mind. Don't get so carried away that you're saying to yourself, oh, my God, oh, Target, oh. It's just, it's one company. They, they made, obviously made a made, made a boo-boo. <laughs> and they're going to pay the penalty for that. But in the meantime, the overall market 
has been smashed to the downside so aggressively that I really think that the bias, at least for now, is to try to find some support and try to find the, the light at the end of the tunnel, which hopefully is not a freight train, so that at least we can move off the lows. So if the volatility index, which is already down a little bit from where it was, it's up 13 cents at 25.20, actually starts to trade the 2480s earlier, uh, late today, and the market is actually able to hold, say, the Dow gets to about a plus 75, there's a plus 20. I think you can see a nice close. I'm not being 